Hi, it's Patrick again. I will now walk you through this year's main Bioscience Day activity. You will be taking inventory of your own and your classmates' genetic traits. A good way to learn about this is to examine the traits that were passed down to you by your parents. We'll do that by examining the dominant and recessive genes that you inherited. What are genetic traits? You may already know that you received one set of genes called an allele from your father and another set from your mother. The combination of these pairs of genes that you inherited is called your genotype. Your genotype, or your DNA, determines the actual traits that you have. These actual traits are called your phenotype, which can include things like eye color, nearsightedness, and whether or not you have dimples. These are genetic traits. Other examples of genetic traits include hair color and the ability to roll your tongue in a U-shape. What does it mean if traits are dominant or recessive? Many people believe that the word dominant in dominant traits means that it's very common, but this isn't actually true. What it means is that when the dominant gene is present, it will be expressed over the recessive gene. So a dominant gene could be very rare, but if it's there, it will be expressed. Taking inventory of genetic traits. Now that you know all about genetic traits, let's take inventory of your own genetic traits. Before you start examining your body for traits, let's grab or print this form. All the traits listed on this form differ dependent on your inherited genetics or the genes that you express in your cell's DNA. I'll walk you through each individual trait to make taking inventory easier. To do that, I have Camden here to help. Let's start with dimples. Dimples are reportedly caused by a single gene where dimples are the dominant trait and no dimples are the recessive trait. Let's see if Camden has dimples. Check your smile. Dimples really form as indentations around the mouth in that area, right about there. It looks like Camden doesn't have dimples, but if she did, it would be right around that area. So we would go ahead then and check off on our page that Camden does not have dimples. Now let's move on to earlobes. Let's examine the lower part of our ear. Camden here has detached earlobes. Notice how the bottom of her ears hang to the side of her head. If you have attached earlobes, the bottom of your ears, the earlobes, will attach directly to the side of your head. Now let's check out hairline shape. Examine the hairline across your forehead. For me, I have a V shape. For some, like Camden over here, there's a straight line. It's reported that the gene for the V, the widow's peak, is the dominant gene, and the straight line across your forehead is the recessive gene. The next section is hand clasping. Without thinking about it, fold your hands together and interlock your fingers. Which thumb is on top, your right or your left? One study showed that most people put their left thumb on top, like Camden's here. That means that there's a fewer amount of people, like me, that put their right thumb on top. Now let's look at the hitchhiker thumb. Try to bend the last joint on your thumb backwards, at least a 45 degree angle. Most people cannot do this. Camden and I can. This is called a hitchhiker's thumb. The next topic is tongue rolling. One study found that 70% of people with European descent can roll their tongue into a U-shape, and the remaining 30% can't. Can you roll your tongue into a U-shape? Let's try it. It looks like we both can. Now very special people are able to roll their tongue into a clover shape. This indicates that you're likely genetically a leprechaun. That is not true. Now let's look at freckles. 
You know those little dots we have on our face, on our skin, and all over our bodies? They come from genes, as well as the sun. Have you ever wondered why people with red hair often also have freckles? That's because red hair and freckles are caused by the same gene. Now let's check out the cleft chin. The cleft chin refers to a chin with a Y-shaped dimple in the middle of it. Camden here has no cleft chin. Her chin is perfectly round. Mine, on the other hand, does have a little line in the middle, so I have the cleft chin, which is the dominant genetic trait. Now let's take a look at hand dominance. Now this varies from culture to culture, but in Western societies, up to 90% of people are right-handed and as low as 10% of people are left-handed. Now let's take a look at how Camden's been filling out her paper to see what hand is dominant for her. It looks like she's using her right hand, so she's right hand dominant. The same, if she were using her left hand, she'd be left hand dominant. Graph your class data. Once your results are recorded in the table, Share your data with the rest of the class. You'll need to take inventory of the rest of the class's genetic traits. You can record your class's data by drawing a bar graph on the graph paper or entering data into Excel or Google Sheets and make a graph using the software. Another option is to graph percentages of people in a group with a given trait. You can create a percentage by using this formula. And that's it. We hope you had fun with this activity for Maine Bioscience Day.